Welcome to CC Writes. My name is CC Lepke, and today I am doing more writing sprints, but this time with the theme of nature. Just like last time, I'm going to randomly generate a prompt with the theme of nature and a random genre to go with, and we'll see what I can come up with. So I made this all new spinny wheel to randomly generate my topics. So this time it is a tragedy about waking in a strange environment. Well, let's think on that. Waking in a strange environment, you've got a lot of different places where you could end up. There's maybe desert, forest, a cave, and isolation, I think, is a pretty important part of this. Confusion. So those are all things that I can keep in mind when trying to determine what actually happens in the story. So what major theme should I put in there and where should I set it? I think for this one, it could be like an alien planet or a different dimension. That would both be kind of fun. Like a fantasy realm, it could be like an isekai. Let's go with that isekai idea. But since it's a tragedy, I want to put like a twist on it, something unique to this story and something that can happen really quickly. Like an isekai where the person is transported to the new world but gets there too late and the destruction and everything has already happened and there's nothing that can be done about it. So the scene, if it's going to be a tragedy, I want it to be dramatic. So we'll say like it's this new world It'll be like a citadel that they end up at, but maybe the citadel is destroyed or rotting away, something like that. So the characters are going to be the hero, and then there has to be somebody who sort of explains what happens. Survivor, and maybe the magician or king that summoned the the hero. And then I also want sort of the the feeling of a bad guy. Like maybe you don't see the bad guy exactly, but you know at the end of the story the bad guy is there. I'll call that the dark shadow. So we'll have the hero's last moments on earth, appearance in a new place, excitement for what's going to happen, realization that something isn't right, encounter with an angry survivor, or no, encounter with a survivor that rescues them. And then the meeting with the mage king where the hero realizes that they can't do anything from here. So yeah, that's a nice simple story. Has a nice tragic ending there and I think I can definitely work with that. So the next thing is I will just put 25 minutes on the clock and I'll get as much of that story written as I possibly, possibly can. Hopefully I will be able to do it in enough time that I can finish the whole story within that 25 minute period. So let's get started. Okay. Well, I didn't make it all the way through that time, but that's all right, because I got a good way into it. I got up to the point in the story where he has an encounter with a survivor. The only other things that have to happen in the story is that she takes him to the Mage King who explains what's going on and the revelation of the tragedy that occurred is made known. And what I decided is that the tragedy occurs because he fought death so violently in the other world, which stalled him entering the new world. And so it's actually his fault that there's no hope after that. He was so afraid of death, and so he brought it to this entire world that, that he was being sent to. So I think that's a nice, fun tragedy to go with. But I'm not going to finish that one. I'm going to go on to the next story. And that one, we'll figure out what it will be now. Okay, these are two things that I've never written about before. So this one is going to be a mystery 
about survival. That is so vague. I could literally go anywhere with this. <laughs> Maybe I should have figured out a little more detail in my prompts. But so there's survival against nature, and then there's the mystery aspect to it. So what could be mysterious about surviving in nature? Hmm. Well, it's always important to find an angle. And that's why I include the theme for everything, because the theme helps me determine which direction I want the story to go. So, here is the Earth. It could be a mystery about a betrayal that caused him to end up in a bad environment where they have to fight to survive. Maybe they don't know how they got there, and they have to put the pieces back together as they're trying to survive. That would be an easy way to go with it, definitely. It could be maybe like an Indiana Jones sort of thing where they're investigating something like um, ruins or something out in the jungle or investigating mysterious events that are happening around an area out in the wilds or in a forest or desert or whatever. And that could be interesting because you could have like, you could have an a mystical aspect to it. Maybe a, a village has been haunted by ghosts or something like that. And like the village shaman sends out one of his warriors to get rid of the ghost. And so he has to figure out where it's coming from. I don't know if I want to go fully mystical on it. If I did, then it would probably have something to do with like... So there's a, a book by Tamara Pierce. Alana. It's one of the first books she ever wrote, or at least she ever published anyway. And the thing about this story is towards the end, the main character and the prince of the kingdom go out to investigate some ruins and end up finding these ancient powerful beings that inhabit the ruins. And they're the ones that are taking the children of the nearby city and basically eating them. And then the main character and the prince have to fight to to destroy those beings. So I could do something along those lines. That would be easy enough, I think. But there's little to do with Survivor in that kind of idea. So, okay. I think I have an idea. So the theme that I'm going to go with is along the lines of spiritual, like a spirit realm, and how we interact with it. I'll put it in a forest. The main character will be a hunter, somebody who's gone off on a long journey and has to survive. Uh, maybe, maybe a younger character, somebody who is approaching adulthood, so they're maybe on a spirit quest. It'll be team hunting a strange animal through the forest, uh, specifically a starving team. The animal keeps evading him, realizes the animal can get into the trees. Finally able to track it into a clearing. What else can we do? Turns out to be a spirit of the forest. Could kill it to survive. Chooses to let the majestic creature go. There has to be a little bit of a satisfactory ending to that because you have this whole give and take where this creature knows it's being hunted. It's trying to evade. It's found out. And then rather than kill it, it's allowed to live by this hunter. And so at this point, the starving teen, you know, is in, is in dire straits, knows that he's probably going to die. And we'll say that maybe as he's sitting against a tree, fruit falls into his lap from the tree and he's able to survive. Yeah, I think that should be a decent enough mystery about survival. So we'll put another 25 minutes on the clock and get started. Yeah, I got through a good bit of that. As 
far as the storyline is concerned, I got up to the part where he uncovered the mystery behind the creature, and now he's running after it and um, about to catch up with it, which just leaves the encounter in the meadow or the grove, him not killing it, and then his reward from the creature for not killing it. So I got pretty far into that story too. That's good. Makes me happy. I kind of like the tribal spirit quest thing that's going on this story and the the pressure that he feels in order to meet the needs of his family and uh, meet the expectations of his tribe. The character was really worried about how he looks to the people in his community and what effects that it would have on his mother in particular. So I really like those aspects of the story and I think it was just enough of a mystery to work for that. But now we're going to move on to the next story. Let's see what we get. Well, this is an interesting one. Uh, it's a horror story about man versus his own nature. When I talk about nature, there's the elemental kind of nature where, you know, you go for a walk in the forest, or there's also the nature of a creature, the nature of humans, the nature of animals, things like that. And so I think this one's a lot easier than some of the other prompts that I've had, because it's very easy to come up with an idea of a horror story where it's a person against themselves and who they truly are, that that sort of imagery going around. So let's talk angle. What angle do I want to approach this with? We've got somebody who has a cruel nature, uh, but is otherwise typically a nice person, would be considered a good person. You've got the multiple personality sort of thing where you suddenly realize that you have an alter ego and that alter ego is a murderer or something. I think it could be interesting and fairly easy to go with the idea of someone uncovering something about themselves and what they're capable of that I think we could fit into a horror setting, possibly. So in that case, the theme would be the extent of human depravity. The idea of this, of course, would be that a person comes across a situation where they start to realize something absolutely horrible about themselves. I mean, traditional horror stories are a person in a house, maybe there's a ghost or something. It starts off with minor incidents of close contact, you know, maybe noises, maybe slight possessions for a short period of time. And then going on towards the end of it, everything is chaos and the person is trying to escape but unable to escape from this situation. So let's think about that in terms of plotline. I'll put this, these notes in the beat section. So as far as plotline is concerned, you have intro to world, minor encounters, increased activity. The minor encounters are, of course, blown off. Increased activity where fear causes the person to want to run, followed by peak activity where the person tries to escape or fight back but cannot, with the end result being either death or escape with trauma. And typically it's a perceived escape because they always want the stories to go on after that. Actually, more in the middle, it's they don't want to run away. They typically investigate and try to fight back. So it's the idea of you're in a haunted house. Little things are happening, you don't really think much of it, but then something you care about comes into danger because of it. So the first thing that they'll do is they'll investigate and see if there's a way to try and get rid of it so that they can have the thing that they want and keep their family safe or whatever. Because for whatever reason, they don't want to leave the house. They don't want to give up this thing that they have. And then from there, it tends to become obvious that the activity isn't going to stop and in fact it's getting worse because they're fighting back um, and so at that point they try to escape but they've gone too deep into everything and everything is just blowing up in their faces from there. 
Now the question is what sort of human depravity is going to go on with the main character of the story? It'll be kind of like a horror story but told from the perspective of the evil person. And of course the person won't consider themselves evil because it wouldn't be fun if they did. So is it the capacity to murder, the desire to murder, the desire to torture, realizing that they enjoy suffering or enjoy other people's suffering? That could be a, a particular topic. I came up with this idea a while back for horror story creatures called Pinogriefs, which is just the drinkers of grief. They're a type of creature that look just like normal humans, but they they survive off of human grief and fear and negative feelings. And some people can, uh, or some peanut griefs, can survive just off of being around people who are miserable, but it's easy for them to become addicted to it or to try and force people into miserable situations so that they can be fed by it, which leads to a lot of them becoming serial killers and things like that. So I could go with that, have a character be a peanut grief. I've never written a story about it before. I just had this idea of this type of monster. So I could use this as an excuse to use that character type, maybe like a, a character coming to realize what they are. Yeah, I think that might be fun. So we'll say character is a pina grief. Another character could be a friend, a stranger. Ooh, I could have it be like a fake out where they're in a horror story situation and trying to escape like a serial killer or something like that. And, and this is where the pina grief's inner feelings start to unlock. And then they end up taking over the serial killer's area. So they so they're sort of like swapping roles at that point. That seems like it would be a much longer story. Well, either way, I'm not going to be able to finish it, so we'll put it more towards the end. Now, where would the scene take place? I could set it up. I mean, there there are plenty of classic places for a horror story. Old abandoned warehouse, out in the woods, old hospital for mental illness. I just did one in the woods and a lot of this is going to be nature-based so I don't want to repeat too many places. So let's put it... But a psychiatric hospital is just too much, I think. Yeah, let's go with a psychiatric hospital. We'll start with the MC and friends. Hiding from killer. Try shoving aside his feelings of being attracted to his friend's fear. Now how would I have the main character try and investigate these feelings that he's having. Something simple that I can get done quickly because I don't want to spend too much time in any one aspect of this. Okay, so he would know that he can't test it on his friends. So he needs to test the idea that he's attracted to other people's pain on the killer. I think I want to throw in some thriller elements to it to where the, the killer is coming after them and there's like a time jump. So we'll have the friend hurt her hand and him like sitting there staring at her hand trying to fight the urge to, to do something super creepy like lick the blood off or something. And then it'll time jump to the killer coming up to where they are. Him standing there with like both of the people he's with dead. Yeah, I think I think that's a good one. Okay. And then we'll end it off with a nice, like, news story of the, the main character uh, having to fight for his life and being the sole survivor of this killer. So now he's the one that is the serial killer and he's gotten away with murder because of the situation that he was in. Yeah, I think that's fun. Yeah, this promises to be one that I'm not going to be able to finish in 25 minutes, but I will do my best.
Okay, so I think that's going to be the last writing sprint for today. In this particular story, I got a lot further than I expected with how much stuff I was putting in it. But I got to the point where the friend is about to hurt her hand and the main character is trying to resist the feeling of going after her. Then we'll do a time jump to where the serial killer comes upon them and finds uh, the main character basically just in a state of ecstasy with both of his friends dead at his sides and he'll look up see the killer there and smile and uh, start to go after him and then from there it'll cut to the new story of the sole survivor of a serial killer and it being the main character with the story of him having escaped by killing the serial killer uh, through self-defense. I got a good way into it. I got a lot of writing done today overall. I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Through all of these stories, I got through about a page and a half to two pages, which is pretty good. I think by the end of doing all of these writing sprints, I'm going to have a nice collection of short stories that I'll be able to, to print as an omnibus or something or an anthology or whatever I want to make it into. I think it will be really cool and I'm very excited about it. Of course I actually have to finish the stories but I have enough of the beats written down for each of them that I determined through the the initial plotting that it should work out pretty well I think. I have really been enjoying writing these short stories though and I think going through individual scenes to write a short story it's more effective than what I've tried to do in the past. I'm not really a short story writing person so this has turned out to be surprisingly fun for me. I'm definitely gonna keep it up for a little while anyway with different themes each time. But that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed our time together and I will see you later.